I have a couple of plain polarized light filters and these are kind of cool. Uh, the way they work is they just have a regular filter or a piece of plastic that they stretched really hard in one direction and not the other and it causes it to block out 50% of light and directionally. So when I rotate this, uh, these are blocking out one direction and the other one's blocking out the other direction. So all the light is blocked out here in this little segment right here, whereas when I rotate it back, it's just 50% of the light that's coming through is being blocked. Now, even when blocked, you might be like, well, I can see this, but this is now just the ambient light in the room that's hitting the spot. None of the light is making it through the polarizing filter itself. So those are pretty cool. But something you can do to add to this that's really nifty is something called corn syrup. So corn syrup is a sugar solution essentially, and some of the carbon atoms in here have four different things attached. And that will cause this to influence the plane of polarized light and actually rotate it. So here, this kind of blocks out all the light. If I put the corn syrup in the middle, it would rotate it so that it's more like this, where it blocks out some of the light. And the really cool thing with corn syrup is it does so in a way where, where the different colors take longer to go through the corn, or polarize at different rates through the corn syrup. So if I put one of these underneath the corn syrup and one of these above the corn syrup, I get a certain color coming through. As I rotate this, it's going to change which colors are being blocked by the top filter. So you see it change to pink, kind of to green, yellow, orange, and back to kind of a pinkish and violet. And so this is a really cool way of kind of looking at how carbon can influence the plane of polarization in a colorful manner. So another cool little trick we can do is take advantage of the fact that all scattered light or reflected light polarizes. And the reason for that, or one of the explanations that I heard that I kind of made sense with that when light travels, they transverse wave. So it's either going this way or this way or some combination of those two. Uh, but if it bounces and goes this way, it couldn't have been going this way and then bounced that way. Otherwise, the light is a compressional wave. So only one of those directions kind of scatters off in a given direction. So we're going to put some just things to block out the light until we have just a small square kind of group. And then we're going to go ahead and put our polarizing filter on top. So that's polarized light. You can tell here's the second polarizing filter to see it kind of change. So I'm sending plain polarized light, and then here I have a thing of the corn syrup that's in a little bit taller cylinder. So you're no longer watching up here, but just kind of right here. What we should see happening now is that there should be kind of an impact where different colors are going to scatter at different portions of this. And you're going to see different colors based on the height coming up and scattering towards the camera itself. So that's kind of a nifty kind of trick you can look at. It kind of incorporates a whole bunch of cool physics all into one thing. So if we go back and just put our regular corn syrup on top, you know, now we can go ahead and see that there's you know, this color change at the top. Up in the square up there, or you can even tell it up here a little bit. Uh, that's a pretty nifty way of looking at optical activity and organic chemistry combined with some of the plane polarized and circular polarized light physics.